morning. I was mad. Ultra definitely in a Danganronpa mood because you know, LB really enjoys Danganronpa. And I decided, you know what? I'm gonna pay homage to one Danganronpa because Danganronpa definitely influenced and impacted my life in a really significant way. And then two, I also wanted to show appreciation and thanks to Masafuni Takara. And who is that? That is the composer of the entire, the entire Danganronpa franchise, the Danganronpa series. He composed the music for Danganronpa 1, aka Trigger Happy Havoc, Danganronpa 2, aka Goodbye Despair, and Danganronpa 3, aka, uh, what is Danganronpa 3? It's called Danganronpa 3. Ah, I forgot the, the sub tag for Danganronpa 3. By the way though, as well as Danganronpa Ultra Despair Sisters, and I think there are a, a few others, a few of the other spinoffs. By the way, I just really want to show my appreciation to his absolutely fantastic musical works, because if you know anything about LB, right? Even though that music is a very, very, did I say very? very big thing for me music is such a big thing music has saved my life more times than i can count okay so yeah i just want to show my appreciation to megan rumpa and masafina takada as well as i want to say this too if you haven't played any or experienced any of the dangan rumpa games the stories because it's a visual novel if you haven't experienced them and you plan on doing it one day listen big ultra super spoiler alert okay ultra spoiler alert right now this is your one and only chance spoiler alert spoiler alert spoiler alert spoiler alert okay all right okay and if you're like well i'm not gonna i'm not gonna play dang and rock in the future but i do want to want to see lb i understand but i also want you to understand that dang and rapa is something that you have to experience i'm telling you just trust me okay trust me i said it so it's true trust me man i'm telling you either way though ready to dive into some And we're gonna be starting with Trigger Happy Havoc. Now I was gonna also decide I was gonna also do like see if I can rank my favorite Dang and Rapper songs top ten for each game. But I was like, nah, I don't wanna do that. I'll do that later. I'll do that in the future. Right? But for now I just wanna just, just, just take it all in. So this is a song like how I was saying when I was doing the Final Fantasy 13 trilogy. You know, I still gotta do the whole trilogy. But this is the first song, the first song in the entire series of Danganronpa that you're going to hear. And, of course, the song is called Danganronpa. The, the title of the song is Danganronpa. It's not called Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc Intro. It's not called Trigger Happy Havoc. It's called Danganronpa. Because this is the song, this lead motif, this is the, the core central piece musical-wise that the rest of the series follows. So if you've never enjoyed Danganronpa and you might be hearing it for the first time, like let's say this is your first time ever actually deciding to enjoy the storyline of Danganronpa and you hear this song and you're like, what the heck is this, right? Well, hey, this song is literally, expect this and more, okay? Because this is like all of uh, Masufu, Masufi, or Takada? Masufumi Takada. This is all of Masufuma, Masufumi Takada. This is him in, in full blast right here. Uncut unedited every he's giving everything he has in the song <laughs> okay and it literally like i said is the exact thing to expect for the rest of the series all right now there might be some songs that i might skip who knows but yeah so there you go dang and romper that's the dang intro and this song is called dang and Rampa. okay you see right here dang and Rampa. and if you've seen it in the past you know that the title of songs are very, 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 very important. Okay, so it's unfortunate that this this playlist, because it's the, the official soundtrack, it's not in order. It's not in order from when the events happen in the game, okay? Also, that's another spoiler. Too. So this is in order, and this is in order, but everything else past this is not in order. In fact, everything else past this is just in, is it in alphabetical order? I don't think so. It's an order based on the the official soundtrack, like the CDs, okay? 
I didn't make sure and see if my audio and video was good. Hang on one second. A E I O U. No, I'm sure it is. Yeah, everything's solid. And this is the first song for the first main menu. You hear that on the left side? It's a little like the like the lady right there. Hey y'all. Left side. You don't know how I first found out about Dang and Rampa too? I'm gonna I'm I'm actually say this. Here's how I first found out about Dang and Rampa. So I'm gonna also show appreciation to this person as well. It was from Zero. Content creator Zero. Okay. I I seen it a few years ago. I think it was like 2015 or 2000. Was it 2015? Yeah, 2015 or 2016. So that was years ago. That's more than a few, right? And he's he was a professional. Um, Smash fighting game player. He's a professional fighting game player, Smash player, and he also competed in other 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 fighting games as well besides just Smash, by the way. And he also was a streamer and everything. And he really liked Danganronpa, but I was like, what is Danganronpa? What even is that? Why is it called Danganronpa? What is this bear? What is this music? Right? But then years later, aka last year, 2022. Yeah, 2022 is when I first dived into the series early 2022 early and also fun fact Danganronpa was one of the absolute first games that I ever streamed all right beautiful days this song this listen when you hear this song in Danganronpa 1 because like the story at you know the story is very unsafe I'll just say that right but when you hear this song this I remember when I was playing it for the first time when this song played I would always just let out a sigh of relief because then when this song plays I at least know that nothing bad is going to happen. Okay? Nothing bad is going to happen when this song plays. And then one of the big issues I always friend not issues, because it's not an issue, it's not a gameplay issue at all. Just personal issue is. Because this song plays during what the game refers to as free time. And you can spend time with some of the characters before they die. Right? And, and you don't know when they'll die. And so I'm just always like, who do I want to spend time with? I don't want to spend a bunch of time with this character. And then they die in the next day. Right? So I'm just like, who do I want to spend the time with? Man, they get around with you. How you manage to create a song that's just tranquil, but at the same time, make you conscious that at any moment, any of these people could be dead in the next day. And then on top of the fact too, some days you would you would get to hear the song back to back to back to back. And then sometimes you'd only get to hear it one time. I'm telling you, I, I, I always adored when this song played because I knew things were gonna be fine. But I remember in the beginning, though, I was like, dude, I don't know if I can trust this song, because, like, but no, 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 over time, I realized I can trust this song. Man. Oh, man. That's why, I, that's why I said spoiler alert, all right? A spoiler alert. Hopefully, if you're if you're listening to this, you already have experienced Dang and Rampa for yourself, or you have no interest in wanting to, but uh, please, please, please enjoy it. Hope's Peak Academy, man.
Man, it's getting it. That's I think that's a synthesizer, right? It's killing it. See, this is free time with LB. This is free time with LB. Same thing. Alright, this next song. Wow. Wow. This next song. And my earlier videos that I would upload to YouTube and TikTok, I can't tell you how many times I would use this song. This song, Beautiful Dead, as, as the song in a lot of my background for a lot of my videos in the past. Beautiful Dead. Listen to the title. Beautiful Dead. Beautiful Dead. Dead indicates that something's dead. And, and beautiful is something that is pleasant on the eyes. or something that is just a positive feeling and emotion. So how can we combine those two? Be how can you have beautiful and dead? Exactly! 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 Beautiful Dead. Two polar opposites, and yet it just works. Even listen to the song. Listen to the song. The song is beautiful, but at the same time, you know there's something going on here. Because the dead, as well as the song, still gives off that vibe as well. He managed to convey that in musical form. He's a musical genius. I don't care what anybody says. This man is a musical genius. You hear that in the background? You hear it? This part is sorry. Hear it? Again. And you hear the bass, the bass, the bass. the base.
beautiful there, man. What a song. What a song. Now diving straight into the trial. Straight into the trial, because it's, it's not an order. It's not an order. Man, I wish it was an order, man. Dang it. I'll, I'll probably have to, like, upload my own playlist and put it in order. This is a song where you put your thinking cap on. You can even feel you fill the thinking cap in the song. I hear how it's kind of like offbeat a little bit in that fire. I'm talking about the drums. This is the deep thinking cap. I'm telling you, I like using my brain. I like stimulating my brain. I do. If you know I'll be, you definitely know I like stimulating my brain. I like thinking hard. I like. I like looking at things from multiple different perspectives to try to find the truth. That's this song, man. I'm telling you. This this game made me think. It made me think. Me? Me? Because like usually like I can figure something out. I, I, for example, if I'm watching a movie, I can literally call what's going to happen in a movie, like an American style average movie, and like the intro. The first 20 minutes, I'm like, oh, this is going to happen. I literally, like, if I watch something with my wife, all right, watch, this is going to happen. This is what's probably going to happen. Here's the plot twist. This is the person that did it. This is the, you see what I'm saying? And it happens because, like, I'm so used to constantly thinking about over, over thinking about things and trying to figure things out far in advance before it actually happens. I'm telling you, in the alternate reality, I was a freaking magnificent detective. But this story got me to really think that's how you know that's how you know this is this is a thinking cap story this is a i mean man also this was a visual novel that got me into visual novels too by the way and don't forget lb is also creating his own thank you dagan rapa This and, it's this visual novel and another one actually, that really like, I was the catalyst for me to want to create my own and it's called Raging Loop. This is Manakuma. This is Manakuma. That's Manakuma. Yes, Cindy. Is that what he says? No, Malakuma's Malakuma's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh snap! What else? What else? What else? More Malakuma quotes. <laughs> he keeps this same. Like this is his theme. He keeps this theme throughout the, the entire series, and it gets. Like remix and stuff. Oh, it's so amazing, dude. Oh, uh, he's the Monokuma of the Apex community, by the way. Just want to go ahead and sit here and say that, by the way. You'll see. <laughs> oh. And I got dang it, Rafa, on the TV too. Right here is the TV.
Look at this logo, dude. Look at this fire logo. That's so high, dude. All right, box, box 15. This is the investigation theme. Investigation theme. investigation theme looking around for the clues with what's her name ah, I can't remember her name but yeah fire investigation theme now many of the songs in the first game get brought into the second and third game this song is used a few times in the second game and it's Barely, if at all, used in the third game, which is really interesting. But the context in which, in which this song is used is like a uh, slice of life moments, but at the same time, like really odd, weird moments. Like when a character is being really themselves and really odd. Kind of like how LB is like at any given moment. It's kind of like imagine like if a character would have been like, hey guys, did you know I like to eat? human intestines sometimes and like then, then this song would play because it's not like what they're doing is like ah, is, well i mean it is wrong i don't know but like that's how this song is used when it's used and it's used so amazingly it's like like when they're really like coming out and ex expressing themselves and i'm really in, in a way that the rest of the world would deem odd or strange but that doesn't mean that, that it's wrong Distrust. It's a fun fact. So this Danganronpa, 
before it was Danganronpa, was actually called Distrust. That was supposed to be the title of the game. But it got changed because the, the story of the origin of this this story is really interesting on how it was being created and things. But it's fine that the original title managed to still keep its hold in the musical format and the music title distrust. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Where? That's one of the execution songs. Wow, th th this song too. This is when your back is against the wall, when you really shut them down, and now they're getting desperate during the trial and stuff, or as well as outside of the trial as well. Also, it's called Buzzkill too, because generally this, this song mainly plays when everything is finally starting to go really good. When everything is finally starting to be fine, and then boom, this happens. Somebody's dead. Somebody had to kill somebody. Buzzkill. We were so close to finally being able to just... Man, I'm telling you, this... this like, I, I'm, I'm trying so hard to not spoil, even though I said spoiler alert, and like I've already said that it's fine for me to spoil, because I put it in the title, but still! Have to experience it yourself, I'm telling you, man. I'm recommending it, so that should mean something. Enjoy this for yourself. I'm, I'm not I, I I can't restream it. It won't it won't it won't have the same effect. It won't have the same effect if I restream it. Because there's there, there, that's just how some stories are in this world. Some stories are best in like like how I'm actually enjoying Beacon Pines on, on my streams every night. Right, like, and 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 Undertale is another great example. Undertale is another great example, and and Cooling Delta Room and stuff, stuff like that. And that's just best enjoyed fresh. Otherwise, you won't get the same like impact, you know. Hell, dude. I, so I'm not gonna restream it. I'm not gonna replay through it. Mm -mm. I know you're on the right side, I've been doing it. Listen for that. trial underground theme before you start a trial make sure you got everything all your notes set make sure you mentally are prepared for this trial to begin that's the song because after this song plays that's when it's time to literally dive straight into it the mind game begins the mind battle begins and somebody has to be elected guilty because somebody can ah oh, dude i'm telling you man 
Okay, hopefully the trial themes come up next. Nah, they don't really. Oh, actually. Whoa. Nice. MTV. Oh, this is the other one. This one. Here, all right. Load up. Load, load up the bullets. Woo Loading that revolver up, man. Wait, is this my favorite version of it? Of this song? I, I, I think. Oh no, I don't think it is. Also, for me, Ty gonna kill this track, dude. And you have a time limit too. I mean, you got amazing music in your ear, so you want to jam out to the music. But at the same time, you have to really think and think and think on all the clues that happen and try to figure out the exact thing that you have to like. Call, like, gotta call people out on regards to their contradictions. And you have a time limit. You have a time limit as well, because like Monokuma said, humans are lazy. If you don't give humans a time limit, then they procrastinate and they don't get things done. They won't start, they won't think, they won't think and feel, and they won't think and feel pressured unless you put a time limit on them. That's how it is. Oh my gosh, dude. Man. All the versions of, of all the versions of that. Yeah, there's another one of the execution themes. Weekly Despair magazine. And the reason why this song is called this most likely is because Here's your weekly newspaper, your weekly magazine of despair, because you're here in Hopespeak Academy, where you're stuck in here with Monokuma and Junko, okay? And like, they're not gonna let time, too much time pass without you feeling literally true despair. I mean, oh my gosh. But it's like a, a joke. Weekly Despair Magazine. Cause that's the only time this song plays is when there's just like, just absolute chaos unfolding. Oh, we're gonna skip this one. All right, there we go. Welcome to the Spare Academy. Shuffle Master. I don't remember when that song plays. Another execution theme. Beautiful morning. 
just like Beautiful Dead, except a little different, because that you know, lead motif. But this is during the morning time when you first wake up. If hopefully nothing crazy has happened and you're already aware of it. Wake up in your room, your soundproof, completely 100% soundproof room. And you have no idea what's happening out there. You have no idea if there was a murder that just happened right outside your front door because it's completely soundproof. 100%. Climax reasoning, putting all the pieces together. You hear that? That was higher notes on the piano? Don't neglect it. And then the set the size on the background. You hear the synthesizer? Don't worry, it'll come in louder when it's pretty much just that thing going by itself. It's just saying, oh. There it is, you hear it? Man, so much is happening right here. Because when this song plays, you're finally putting everything together and bringing this, this disaster to a close. You have to, you have to earn this song. You have to earn, you have to work and earn this song to play. Th this song is essentially like in, in RPGs. You know how you have a like Final Fantasy, bum, 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 victory fanfare. That's this. This is your victory fanfare in Dangan Rock and This is what it sounds like. Because it's a victory, but is it? Wow, dude. When this song plays, you know Mona Kuma to drop straight knowledge, straight facts, just like how LB drops straight facts anytime you see LB's live. Did you hear that part? When I was like, it literally, that's literally in the song. It's literally in the song. It, but it is, it's not a constant thing. It's not like, two times. Two time intervals, and you gotta wait until it happens again. Hang on, not where I got you. Because this song literally is the embodiment of Monokuma. It's sporadic, out there, truthful, an enigma. <laughs> I 
I'm telling you, I am the Monokuma of the Apex community. The man that just spits straight, hard, gold facts and tells the truth whether people want to hear it or not. Because people like to hide. People like to live in their, in their imaginary fairy tale bubble land. Don't worry. That's all good. Mama, mama, she got out of Mama, mama, she got out of You heard it? Ain't she's not doing it again? Mama, she got out of Mama, mama, she got out Mama, mama, she got out Oh, 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 oh! Oh, see, look, uh, man! <laughs> even it gets me, even it gets me, but it does do it again, though, where it's like, real quick. I'll rewind it real quick. See, watch. Did you hear it? Is here real quick? Here, I got you. Oh, there it is. Heard it. And there it is. Boom, boom, boom. LB returns. It was just a doorbell. our investigation theme but one of the last few investigations because it changes box 16 not 15 this time all right now this 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 song is the this is probably probably my favorite song in the entire game okay imagine like the final boss theme in the rpg that's this song this is the final boss theme Thank <laughs> you. 
Dude, did you hear that? Okay, there's so much that happens in that part. Let me rewind it, because I want to do another part of that. There's so much that happens in that part. All right, so now we heard the drums, but now there's also like a, not a singer, but like a vocal part of the song, okay? Hey, wait, 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 I said this is my favorite song in the entire Trigger Happy Havoc, okay? Final battle theme. Oh my gosh, I have to rewind, dude. I have to rewind. Oh my gosh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Bring it back, bring it back, dude. I said this is my favorite song in the entire trip I have to have it. The first Oh my god, dude. So we all we all heard the heard the, the like the drum part, okay? Because I've done it 30,000 times already. So keep that part in your head, okay? And we all heard the Hopefully while I was doing that you was hearing the boom 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 But then there's also the Oh my gosh, dude. Man, because this is the final boss theme. It's just not called that, but that's what it is. Because every single trial is literally a battle theme, a boss battle theme. Every single one, every single one, every single one. And then you also have 1v1 battles whenever people try to challenge you. That's mainly in Bangarapa 2, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Like I said, my absolute favorite song in Trigger Happy Havoc, the final boss theme. That's what it is. That's what it is. The final boss theme. Also, too, because like I said, this is during the, you see it said this discussion, discussion right here. That's why I wish this soundtrack, this playlist played the songs in order. I wish they played it in order because the discussion, remember, is when everybody's gathered around and we're going from person to person to person to person and we got to we gotta break break their 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 contradictions. We gotta break their contradictions. This is the final time. Oh, and also too, because it's all a elite motif. You have different variations, different versions of the song, but this is the final one. Man. All right, all right, all right, one more time. I will not pause it this time. Hopefully. No, no promises. Whew. I have a playlist. Look, I, I literally, I've showed this numerous times in the past. I have a, a playlist of, and it's called my, where, let me see if I can find it. Here it is. My favorite video game for slash anime battle themes. This is on that playlist. And I'm constantly... I'm constantly adding to it, but I only add my favorite video game for slash anime battle themes. And this is on it. I'm real strict on what I put on it. And this is on it. Okay. One more time.
You hear that? You hear that hell note? I'm almost reminded. Ah, whatever, dude. You hear the hell note? Hang on. I'm telling you, having pushing your brain to the limit when during the song when it's playing, oh my god, dude. I gotta light a freaking candle, dude. This this is just too amazing. What's I gotta do with anything, LB? I don't know, but just I I don't know, but I just gotta light a candle because this just is just too much, dude. Man, like I said, my favorite song in the entire soundtrack. Boss battle theme right there. Final boss battle. And this is battle theme. And if you really have an have a, a ear for music, you'll definitely be able to tell how all these songs are just different variations of the same. Now this is Makoto's theme. I don't care what anybody says, this is his theme. This is his theme song. 
this is Makoto's theme. Because this song only plays when Makoto is on point. This is Makoto's theme. Also, too, more evidence to prove this is because in the other games, this song is only used when Makoto is present. Makoto's theme. That's the main character. You know Makoto? You... And it's called Class Trial Solar Edition, as in shedding light. Shedding light. Hope also represents light. Shedding light on the darkness. Shedding light on their flaws. Their not inconsistency. What is it called? It's their contradiction. You hear that right there? Hear it? This is Makoto's thing, dude. The physical embodiment of hope. What, what does he say? He's like, no, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Good stuff, Makoto. Are we halfway through the through the soundtrack? 37 out of out of 63? Is that halfway? Yes, we are. We're more than halfway. Nice. Now you could argue this is the the final boss battle theme. But I like the other version better. Actually, lesson this is, I think, another. That's song two. Um. 
Oh, that's pretty much it, huh? That's pretty much it. That's it. That's the that's the soundtrack. Wow. That's it. But it's fine because this is not this is not his only work. He also has the second. And many people consider Danganronpa 2 to, to, to be better than one. And and the, the trilogy, one, two, and three, and remember the spin there's spin-offs too. But many people consider two to be better. I don't I think they're all equal and they all have very they all have a message to portray. Okay. The creator is trying to portray a message with, with each one. So I don't like to rate them in regards to which one I like better. I don't like doing that. Not not for mm -mm, no. Nah. This has 102, but I think a lot of these are just like sound effects and stuff. So we're gonna go with this. Yep. And this is this is the, the intro, not intro, excuse me, this is the main menu theme for Danganronpa 2. Goodbye, this fan. Oh, and also, too, Daniel Rockford 2 has probably in my top 10 most interesting main menu themes. Not, not, not themes, excuse me, main menus. Because it's the characters walking. And then Monomi comes and snatches them up. And then the next person. And they're walking with the main character, Hajime Hinata. One of the coolest freaking protagonists in literature? I definitely give Hajime. Hajime's so hype, dude. I just really like Hajime. Hajime's hype, dude. Also, this is not in order. Oh, you know what? Hang on. Let me see if this other version is in order. If this other playlist. If this other playlist is in order, then we're gonna go with this one. Oh, I think it's in order. Uh, it's in order. I'm pretty sure this is in order. This is in order. This is in order. Nice. All right, so I got to talk about this one too. I also use Beautiful Ruin and a lot of my older videos as well as the background song. And Beautiful Ruin is a leap motif. It's a different variation of Beautiful Dead. It's, it's the same song, just in a different way. It's the same song. Beautiful Ruin. Look at that logo, dude. That's so far. I ain't gonna lie, when I when I played Dingin' Rapper 2 for the first time, I was wondering to myself, I was like, okay, after experiencing the absolute fire that is and soundtrack that is Dangin' Rapper Trigger Happy Happy and Gang Dangin' Rapper 1, I was like, how how is the composer going to do in the second one, right? Like that was already arguably a perfect soundtrack. How can he top himself? Can he outdo himself? Or at least deliver the same qual- Yes! The answer was yes. Yes, yes. Across the board, yes. Alright.
Also, another song that plays when you know that you're safe and nothing's gonna happen. If you see here where it says re, that means it's coming from the past game. A song that's pulled just from the past game. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. I, I didn't want to say it, but I'm going to say it. What was he? He was the ultimate mob boss. If I'm correct. No, he wasn't the ultimate mob. Oh, he, Fuyu, Fuyuki, Fuyuki Kuzuru. He was the ultimate. The ultimate Yakuza. Okay, so I'm gonna say this. So, if you if you know about Danganronpa, then you would already know that every character is the ultimate of a specific craft or a specific thing, okay? Now, hang on. Now, there's a character whose name is, is Fuyuhiko, and he's the ultimate Yakuza. But, he would tell you that he doesn't believe that he is because there's other people that he thinks deserve the title. For example, he believes his sister deserves a title over him. And also for the fact that he's not even an official Yakuza yet. Did you hear that? Yet. So, like I said, Danganronpa has changed my life in a lot of ways. And this character did in this specific way. And a lot of the characters changed my life and perspective on a lot of different things. But he's the ultimate Yakuza. As you spend more time with him and the story progresses and, you know, character development, like out the wazoo, because this is Danganronpa, this isn't the trashy American stuff that comes out all the time. He's the ultimate Yakuza, and you start to figure out why, even though he's not an, an, actually a, a Yakuza member yet, uh, technically, right? So then I start to wonder, what if I'm the ultimate content creator or the ultimate streamer or the ultimate influencer? I may not have the biggest in the world numbers yet. But if, if he can be officially titled the ultimate Yakuza, who's to say that I can't also be titled the ultimate content creator, or streamer, or influencer because of the potential? I don't want to say that because, you know, it comes off as being narcissistic. And man, 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 I don't care. It's just how it is. It's just a, it's just the truth. Boom. All right. Continuing. Thank you for your ego. Thank you, thank you, Mama. Mm -hmm. All right, time for Mona Me, Mona Me, dude. This is one of my favorite songs in the, in the second game. Not my favorite, but one of my favorites. Mona Me's theme. Let's get it. Mm -hmm. 
Look at this 1.8 million views, dude. This song. Get it, Mono B! Make it dance, dance me, dance! Alright, investigation theme. I like the investigation theme with Thing Rapper 2 a lot. Man, these investigations I'm thinking about for two are next level. They're... The investigations on one are pretty difficult, but two? Woo. 
because you know he got the, the creator I forgot his name but he, he got even more creative with his with his writing and his artistic thinking and his creativity to like really make you think because he already knew that if you already played the first one going into the second one you're going to be more intelligent than you were before and you're going to already try to like know know his tricks so he was like nah don't worry i got you don't even get me started on the strawberry house that was hard but creative because if you know anything about lp you know i don't like the same boring stuff I like things that are different and creative. Uh, I think I'm up. Uh, So I just kept some of those songs because they were from the first game. That's a execution. Okay, hang on. LB has to answer this phone call. Important phone call. Beast back. Ah, ah, I'm coming. Oh, I'm coming back. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, that, that was just a phone call. That was actually my father in law. He, he was just calling because, you know, yesterday was LB's birthday, but he he missed it. He didn't, because I was on the phone with him all yesterday, but he he was like, oh, man, you didn't tell me yesterday was your birthday, man. I was like, oh, no, that's all good. Don't worry about it, all right? Because I'm not, I don't like to really be like, oh, hey, guess what? Today's my birthday. <laughs> I understand I put it in a title and stuff like that yesterday, but that's just because if I didn't put it in a title, literally nobody would have known, right? So going forward, I probably won't do that next year and stuff like that, but yeah, he just didn't know, so he was calling to say happy belated birthday. I was like, ah, thank you. Right. By the way, though, back to Dangan Rampa. Dangan Rampa, Dangan Rampa, Dangan Rampa. I did that because, you know, when you're entering into like a new chapter, it's either one or two where it does that. When in like a new chapter, Dangan Rampa, Dangan Rampa, Dangan Rampa. Continuing. Continuing. Pointing. Oh, this is third island theme.
I remember I heard the song too for the first time in game. I was like, wow, this sounds really out of place. But I was like, this sounds really out of place. All of the, I'm gonna be honest, a lot of the island themes sound very out of place, but that's also too because they're different islands. They all have a different theme, right? Oh my god, dude, this stuff is so like well thought out. I'm telling you, it's freaking genius. I ain't referring to me, I'm referring to the creator. I'll, LP's, LP's also smart, probably even a genius as well, right? I'll be remembered in the future as a genius. It's a classic, it's in my bio here, it's in my, my tag on Twitch. But I'm referring, in this instance, I am solely giving that title to the creator. As well as as the composer. One in a million. Thank you. I, I, I don't know if you're referring to, to LV, but if you are, no, that's 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 all completely the truth. Like I said, ultimate LV is an ultimate. I have, you know, I said it earlier. I don't want to repeat it, but LV is an ultimate. Or you could also be referring to the creator, who also is a genius and a one in a million. Or you could be also referring to or and or for slash and the composer as well. All three of us. Okay. By the way, thank you. Welcome, Dangan Island. Oh, Mona me, Mona me. <laughs> this is also very out of place, too. But it's Mona me. Oh no me. All right, so these that's from Dangan Rapper One. I'm pretty sure this is as well. Let's just remix a little bit. Dangan Rapper One. Oh, that's an execution. Dang One. Ma -ma 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 Monokuma. Monokuma makes his debut because Monokuma doesn't come till way later in Danganronpa 2. And I was like, even when I was playing, I was like, wow, I guess Monokuma's not in this game anymore, huh? Because like he doesn't make his debut for a while. And once he comes, it it, it literal chaos. It's it's utter chaos at that point. Just pure madness. <sighs> It's like I was conflicted too because I was happy he's here, but at the same time I was like, dude, now that means people will literally die. It was just, uh, uh, just I was conflicted, okay? But now we're back in the trial now. This is when, when Hajime has proven people wrong, but this isn't Hajime's theme. I gotta find Hajime's theme. This is when my, my, when Makoto makes his debut. I gotta find Hachime's team. All right, this is the 1v1, the 1v1. I'm glad they added this, this mechanic to me. I ain't gonna lie, it did take me a little while to, to like understand like how the 1v1 battle, the, the cross the cross swords, how that, the objection, right? It took me a while to figure out how that works. I'm not gonna lie, it took me a minute. A minute. In fact, I game over it a few times, the very first time, just trying to figure out. Like, I understood what I was supposed to do, 
But I didn't understand how to like implement that into the gameplay. Cause it was, cause you know, it was just different, which is good. It was just good, but it was just a little different. Future part. This is Hajime's theme. This is Hajime's theme right here. What does Hajime say? He doesn't say you're wrong. That's what Makoto says, right? No, you're wrong. How does what does Hajime say? He's like, I don't remember what he says. Dang it. Okay, one of the things I like in Hajime's theme is the background where it's like, how do I implement this when my sounds like Yeah, that, that sounds weird. But that's kind of how it sounds though. I mean, I'm trying. Don't worry, you'll hear it. I, I'll do it so you can hear it easier. I got you. But I really like how that that's a constant thing in his in his song. But you heard it. Hear it. Hear it. And it's a little bit off beat too, which is super fire. Now you can't miss it now. I know you hear it. Hajime seems is high, dude. Hajime is a cool freaking character. Hajime Hinata. Azume. That's from Dang Ruffle. Anagram.net. <coughs> these were freaking. Uh, listen, listen, listen. I'm gonna be honest. These were, uh, th these were annoying. Every time you have to do this, 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 this mini game, annoying. They had to literally, I feel like that's the reason why they kept changing it, because it was also bad and dang around for one, I'm not gonna lie. The, the, the crossword thing, it kept changing, not because it was new, that's not the reason why. That's partly, but also too, because, you know, they definitely got feedback that it's just really, really freaking hard. Wow, dude. <laughs> but dang around for three got all the minigames spot on well, really well. Oh, this one was fine though. I like this one. When you're on the, on the surfboard, when you're when you're deep diving, deep brain dive, and you're going like on like a brain dive. Oh, this song, dude. This song. What was her name? It was Queen Hiko's retainer, and she was like putting on a front, trying to act like she was that one like serial killer murderer or whatever. That was like super strange to have the mask on. Do this song. Princess Sparkles or something like that, dude.
What is this song? A punishment. Welcome to Dangan Island. Mono me. Fifth Island. See what I mean? Like all the island themes sounded very out of place. But that was on purpose, that was an artistic decision. Look at, look at Kazuichi Soda right here. You see him? Hi. Clock Tower. I think this is a reference to Clock Tower. I think it's called. It's a because I know the creator of Danganronpa. He was he was influenced very heavily by Clock Tower. I think I think that's I think that's the name of that visual novel or adventure game. Clock Tower. Yeah, he was very much in, influenced by. Oh my gosh. He was very much influenced by this game. I know that because I, I I read I read a lot of the interviews that were translated into English. He was very much influenced by this game, Clock Tower. He was very heavily influenced by that game, and there's also a point in the game we're gonna get to it soon, but that part was especially in relation to Clock Tower. It's it's the whole part where it's like eight bit or a sixteen bit or whatever. I can't wait to actually get to that. Alter Ego of the New World. Oh man, this part was freaking wild, dude. Oh no, whoops. Love is survival. This is one of my favorite songs in the in Danger Rapper 2. I know, it's crazy, huh? This is one of my favorite songs in the game, in the second game. Uh, if, if I did make a top 10 list, this would definitely go in the top 10. Hear that?
All right, now I gotta rewind and do the like melody part. Man, the melody of this song, even that, that part I was doing like, like the bass drummy part, but the melody, hang on, I got you, I got you. <clears throat> let, me get, let me drink some water, cause like I said, this is one of my favorite songs, probably in the, my top three songs in the, in the second game. Songs that are unique to the second game, not including any of the songs that are from the first game in here, okay? Whew, here we go, the melody, it's so good. Like I said, one of my favorite songs in the entire game, dude. Nice. Okay, I remember this. This is when I like stretching with Monokuma. <laughs> From me to you, I don't remember this next song. Oh my gosh, I do. This is this. <laughs> this part was so freaking funny. It's when it's when what's her name? What's her name? She's one of my favorite characters in the game. Ibuki. It's when Ubuki is singing when we finally get to hear her sing because she's the ultimate musician and we get to hear her sing. And Kazuichi is literally like panicking, dude. He's like, because <laughs> we've never heard her sing. All we knew is that she's the ultimate musician. And she's very expressive, and she's very out there, and she likes rock. That's all we know. We, we never actually heard her sing, but this is her singing. And, and as Kazuichi Soda's personality and, like, his reaction is so funny to it. But anyway, this is, hang on. In fact, just in, just in case, you know, like, uh, a quick reminder, because I already put spoilers alert, so I'm just assuming at this point that you already know what Danganronpa is and you've already experienced it yourself. But just in case you forgot, Ibuki... What's her last name? I forgot. Ibuki Miyoda. Yeah, that's right. Ibuki Miyoda. Okay, so this is Ibuki, okay? One of my favorite characters in the game. All right, very influential to me as well. So this is Ibuki. And now we're about to hear her sing. This is her singing, dude. It's so fun. And her playing on her guitar and stuff. I can't even replicate this at all. Like, just, this is a... I 
I remember too, Hajime, Hajime's commentary about this is like, and it's hilarious. He's like, he's like, the aura of this song is so much that it's like, breaking me like i feel like i'm literally about to go mad and insane it's just crazy how he's like commenting about it dude it's so funny you know what let me see if i can find it hang on because kazuchi's reaction is so funny to it there's lyrics to it too <laughs> Cause here's here's Kazuichi. Okay, 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 okay. Dude, it's, I, Kazuichi's so wait, this is, uh, this is English. Kazuichi is so funny, dude. Suddenly the stage lit up. Oh, okay, this is. Yeah, hey, Pookie. My specialty is making beef stew. Very out there. <laughs> Very out there. And I remember too when she said that I was like, okay, finally we get to hear Obuki sing. We get to hear her performance, dude. I'm I'm hyped because she was already one of my favorite characters. Just as I thought, that's what she was going for. Well, she is the ultimate musician after all. I can't imagine what what she. Dang, this this person is just like fast forwarding. With full on energy, dude. So put your hands together for From Me to You Too. So the name of the song is called From Me to You Too. So I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a really nice song where she's just like expressing how she feels about herself and to everybody else. I'm like, okay, all right. And like everybody's like, I've ever... okay, I gotta try to pause this. Okay, there you go. Since, since, and here's Hajime. Since she was originally a member of a high school girls band that dominated the music charts. I can probably look forward to her musical stylings, right? Because that's what I was thinking the same thing too. <laughs> and the name of the song is called From Me To You Too. Remember. Okay, I'm gonna go right here. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Kazuichi. You see what I'm saying? Kazuichi. Nobody was prepared for that. Like, no. <laughs> oh my gosh. Kazuichi, dude. He says, I'm going to get cursed. What? <laughs> Even Gundam, Gundam, who's, you know, like very all about like the occult type stuff. He says, S -s -s here's how he talks. S -s Such an over overwhelmingly baleful resonance. Even my four dark devas of destruction look less lively than, and look, they're all like passed out. <laughs> Something like this. Even, even, even Sonya, who's very into the occult and is very odd and i'm saying i'm calling her odd and this is coming from me and even she's like i too am starting to feel chills but this is what happens when you listen to music from an ultimate the ultimate musician see this is why i was thinking the same thing too same thing that that me that me can say with a title like from me to you <laughs> i thought it was going to be a sweet love song don't worry me can i thought the same thing too if I recall, the reason why Buki left the high school girls band was creative differences. As we can see, creative differences. Ibuki wanted to do this, but the rest of the band wanted to do that. So so Ibuki left. She left because she wasn't agreeing with their creative decisions, creative differences. 
And he, he was Hajime. Ah, that must be why. <laughs> and then here's, here's Hiyoko. I'll do Hiyoko. And she's like, Yahoo! It's awesome. That's the first time I've heard such a famous song. I'm glad. Huh. But... Man, I really wish I could wipe my memory. You know, like how Men in Black have that, that stick. And you like lose your memory. So I could experience this again for the first time. Oh, I'm telling you, dude. Mono Beast. Oh, that's not a million other song. So this is, I believe this, this next song is the Investigation Theme Remix. I think this might be execution. Probably, I think. Oh, this song, Let Us Sing of a Hollow Victory. Man. How's the maze thing? All right, discussion B side. And that is from Bang Rapper 2. Oh, okay, so the, the the closing song to this game is fantastic. This is pretty much the end of the soundtrack. Everything else is just like, yeah, well. I, okay, I'll come back to the song. I'll come back to the song because we're, we're almost at the, I want to get to the 8-bit the stuff. Here it is, Beautiful Ruin, 16-bit. Because again, when this is in the game, if you've already explained the game, you already understand. But the creator of Dengarapa had a lot of, took a lot of inspiration from Clock Tower. I have not experienced Clock Tower. It is on my bucket list. It is something that LB has to take care of. But I have to finish my playthrough of the Phoenix Wright trilogy. I'm on the second game now, Justice for All. Right, I'm on the second game. But once I finish it, then I will move on to maybe clock tower because i also still have to have to finish the rest of i forgot the creator's name but the 999 the nonary games because i finished the first one fantastic by the way 999 and now i'm on i always forget i always forget what it's called i literally always forget what it's called because it's such a, a complex title for a, for a for a visual novel it's called oh it doesn't even say because like, i i have the nonary games where it comes with the first and the second one i forgot what it's called you know what I, don't worry i got this Oh, 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 oh. All right, whatever. The Nonary Game. Two. Second one. Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward. That's what it's called. I already, I already got two endings finished from it, but you know, LB, I gotta go all the way through. Let's go to the credits so we can dive into Danganronpa 3. What is the third game subtitle? It's called Danganronpa 3. Oh, I can't remember. Killing Harmony. That's right. Danganronpa 3, Killing Harmony. Killing Harmony. This is one of my favorite video game closing themes of all time. Definitely top 10. 
Bobby's not five. Bobby's not three. Hajime Hinata's story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this is the one that's gonna probably play it in order for Dang Rapper 3. About to dive in Dang Rapper 3. Man, this sounds like on. Oh, because it's still the same composer. Yeah, this is definitely an order. This is an order. Nice. Okay, I will say this. Dangarapa 3 does have my favorite character, though. I hate it. My first, I say first time, I only did one play for it. But when I played it for the first time, I was just like, whoa! Because of the just upscale and the, the graphics. <laughs> the graphics, like going from Dangarapa 1 and 2 and then going into 3? Because 1 and 2, I, I, I think, use the same game engine. I think 3 might use the same game engine. It might, either way though, you can definitely tell a lot of time has passed since Dangarapa 2 to Dangarapa 3. Because the, the graphics just look so. They just look so good. Right? See, look, look, look. Boom, boom, boom. Release date. Came out in 2012, but Danganronpa 3. 2017, dude. That's a lot of time that passed. Like, the, the grass is just night and day, man. Because that was one of the first things that I thought to myself was, jeez, because of the, the jumping graphics. Now, graphics don't make a good or bad game. They don't make a game, they don't make a game better or worse, but... Is definitely a, a relevant factor. I'll say that. And again, <laughs> I, I, it like slapped me in the face because like one and two are like the exact same game in regards to the graphics, for real. Whereas three was just like, Psh, it's crazy. The Monoka. One, so long, farewell, two, one, two, uh, um, uh, uh. Lee is all that remains of a once powerful note. I don't know all the words. Right now, you're on the cards old of magic of adventure. One. Two. One. Two. He is all that remains of the once powerful Joshi. Right now, you're on the console of amazing adventure. is all that remains of a once powerful So low, there 
right now. You're on the threshold of the Monocles are an amazing like group of characters. Like, they're like one character but individual characters still. Like that that's so creative to, to pull that off. Two. Two. Oh, oh my, bad, my bad, my bad, Too early, too early. Two. Look at that piano getting it, dude. Right now, you're on the piano doing the of an amazing adventure. And then also, I can't forget their laugh. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> the monocles do our hype. New chapter. Every time that happened, I would always, while I was enjoying the story, I would always be like, dang it, Rampa, dang it, Rampa, dang it, Rampa, dang it, Rampa. Because in the, in the first and second game, when there's a new chapter, that's what it does at the end. Dang it, Rampa. But it doesn't do that on Dang and Rampa 3. I kept doing it thinking that it would do it, but it didn't. What's on about? Monokuma, oh, Monokuma Rise. Become friends. Here's our free time song for Nagarama 3. Every time I hear this song, I always just hear, what's her name? The Ultimate Mage. Hey, Shuichi. <laughs> hey, Shuichi. <laughs> That's how she would always say his name. What was her name? Her name was... Ma in order for me to remember her name, I have to always remember the ultimate Neo Kaido. Ultimate, the ultimate Neo Kaido. I'll have to remember her saying her name. The ultimate Major's name. Her name was, 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 her name was. Oh no. Thank you, LB. The ultimate Neo Kaido, her name was. <sighs> Ta. Ta Taiba? Taiba? No. I have to if I look it up, I'm gonna face palm myself because I it's at the tip of my tongue. Taiko? Taiko? Taiko. Taiko. Watch, watch. Something like that. Ultimate Neo Kaido. Ta ta ta. Not Kaido. I know Kaido. I am Kaito Momoto. Tinko. It's Tinko. Ah. Oh. Oh, not Taito or Kate Kaito. I know Kaito. Kaito Momoto. Luminary of the stars. Okay, so those my mage. Her name was. Thank you, B. Her name was. I can't remember. Oh my gosh, Himiko, Himiko, the ultimate, I am Himiko Yumina, the ultimate mage. And it's just like dot, dot, dot. But officially, I'm the ultimate magician. And then it's like, Himiko, the ultimate magician. How you doing, Reese? How you doing, Reese? But man, I, I, it was on the tip of my tongue. I couldn't remember it, but it's fine though. Also, too, my my controller is broken. Where's it at? My controller is broken, so I have I have a new controller coming in. <laughs> so I I can't play Apex until it comes in. But once it comes in, I'll be right on Apex because I'm actually waiting. I ain't gonna lie to you. I like the room that that that, that they have in Tengen Rampa. Their personal room looks so. It looks really nice, dude. It just does.
All right, this next song is definitely in my top 10 songs for Danganronpa 3. Nightmare and Locker. Man, this is a song that kicks the game off too. Listen to the bass. Whoa! Hang on, I gotta, I gotta fix my eyes real quick. Just in case I misread that. This is why I should have streamed Danganronpa three. This is a, that's the exact reason, Reese. That's the exact reason why I should have streamed Danganronpa rank that little 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 Danganronpa three. But I am glad to know that you at least experienced Danganronpa 1 and 2. And, well, I don't know if you played 2. If you haven't, I highly, 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 highly recommend it. But at least you attempted it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll hear you out, Reese. You deserve that. You, you earned the right for me to hear you out. Because, like, I don't know. <laughs> the only thing I can think you might say is, like, the graphics. But I said earlier... Danganronpa, I even looked it up. Danganronpa 3 came out in 2017, and the second one came out in 2012 or something like that. Like, that's one of the biggest things that smacked me in the face was how the jump in graphics, because it's been years. But, like, Danganronpa 1 and 2 came out, it was like a one or two year difference. And then 3, it was like a whole, a long time, you know? I don't know what it, what you could say. <laughs> well, but, but, this is interesting, though, because it's something I probably didn't consider. It's interesting to hear a different perspective. I have to see what you have to say. I have to see this. One is graphics. Okay, so the, the okay, so that, that's understandable. It's understandable because I, I, I literally said it. I don't know if you were here, but I literally said it. When I first played Danganronpa 3 for the first time, the first thing that caught my attention more than anything was the graphics. It literally smacked me in the face. I literally was like, it was like whiplash. You know, like you're going on a roller coaster and you're like going up. And then that, that jump when your stomach like does a flip. That's, that's what my eyes felt in the graphics. But I also said this. Graphics don't make a game and i know you know that but it, I, it's understandable it, it, it's very the, the best word i can use to describe that the graphics and thing around three coming from one and two is jarring it's very jarring right it, it's definitely very jarring it, it, it made me feel seasick like kind of like a seasick feeling for a little while but then my eyes got used to it right it's like watching a, a bootleg if you've ever seen like bootleg movies because growing up right we would out there you know those were different times. But when I was a kid, you know, the people I was raised around, they would always have bootleg movies. And like, it's like, why would I want to watch a bootleg? But then over time, your eyes just get used to it. They get used to that quality. It's the same thing with Danganronpa 3D graphics for me personally. But that's understandable. Second, you felt more scared in the first thing in Danganronpa than the third. Okay, so I can explain that one. The most likely the reasoning is because it was your first thing in Danganronpa, right? Does that make sense? It's kind of like how they also how people all also say too that you, you know the Resident Evil franchise. A lot of Resident Evil Evil fans, hardcore fans, say that the new Resident Evil games, not the remakes, but like the new ones, like Resident Evil Five and Six and Seven, and they're, they're like the, the the new Resident Evil games aren't scary like the old ones, and that's not necessarily true because I've also seen the flip side where people who that was their first Resident Evil games, they thought it was terrifying. Because we already, like, knew what to expect. It's kind of like how some people that, like, are on drugs and stuff, 
their, their first hit of a drug is crazy good for them. And they're constantly trying to chase that initial first hit. But you, they built up an, a resistance to it, right? What's the word they built up? In? Not immunity, a tolerance. That's the word. Their tolerance has been established and are constantly chasing that first high or whatever. It's, it's very similar to that. But the thing is, the creator created, the, the creator of Danganronpa, he created each Danganronpa to, to, to have a different message, right? A different theme. It's a different theme among them all. But I completely understand what you're saying, though. I agree with that one as well. The, 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 the theme, the setting of the first game was really unique. But also, too, if you did like that, there's, there's other things as well, like Clock Tower, which I'll... I will be playing in the future because it is my because this is what the creator here's Clock Tower. Here's what the creator of Danganronpa he stated numerous times that he was heavily inspired from this game, from the whole series, the whole series, and he was also inspired by what's it called? I I tried it, I couldn't get into it, but this other one was called. It's like they're in a school, they're in a, just like Danganronpa. They're in a school and they ah, oh, what is it called? I had it. I just couldn't get into it. Hang on. Let me check. What was it called? Thank Gelby. Thank. I, I'm on my Xbox right here. Okay. So it's called, it's called, it's called. Oh, if you hear that bass outside, I, I'm sorry. That, that, that That's just some trashy. It's the same vehicle. Corpse Party. It's called Corpse Party. Here it is. Corpse Party. He was also, the creative Dink Rapper was also inspired by this, this game. Corpse Party. This right here, where it's just like similar to Dinka Rappa's, you know, a bunch of kids in school. And it's definitely, it, there's, it's a whole series. It is definitely really interesting. But I, me personally, me personally, I couldn't get into it. I just couldn't. But I, I ain't gonna lie. They're like, <laughs> you already know how I am when it comes to scary games. And this is a scary game. In fact, I'm scrolling too much. Spoilers. But. I'm, I, there might come another point in, in my life where I might try it again, but it's it's a it's a very trial and error style of game, and I don't really like trial and error, right? I like to use my brain and, and figure out solutions. That that how do I explain it? Kind of like Dan and Rumpel, you know, like the, the 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 trial. There's only one right answer, you know. It's, it's like that. I know I could not get in the corpse party. I'll try it again, maybe in the future. I I think I like the music. I think, because I didn't even get that far. Oh, and, and here was, the, like, when I was playing it, I was into it. But then one thing happened, and I was like, oh, no, the same for me. And it was specifically, and spoiler alert for anybody else, it was specifically in, because it was early in the game, the, the, the first one. You're playing as the female character, and her friend goes to the restroom. And you're waiting outside the restroom for her. And I already, I mean, you got to remember, if you've seen any of me when I play scary games, that's why I don't really play scary games because it's just, it, listen, I don't get, there's a lot of things in this world that don't scare me. I, I rarely get scared. But in a, in a video game, like scary movies don't scare me. None of that stuff scares me. But in a game, that scares me. Because in real life, I'm, I feel very comfortable that I could handle myself in a, lot, a plethora of situations. But in a game, it's not me. It's the character. So I was playing as the, the, the high school girl who's in the freaking whatever the heck is going on there. And it's, it's, it's scary because, like, I know she can't defend herself from that stuff, right? I'm limited to what the game allows the character to do and so on and so forth, right? So that scares me because I don't have control. Does that make sense? It's also, too, why I always feel so confident when I'm playing Apex because Apex, you have so much control of your character movement-wise and everything Right? That's why I like Apex and why I believe I'm so good in the game as well. Because, like, you have a lot of control. Whereas here, and like, course party. Oh, but either way, though. So, now here's the main thing that pushed me away from the game. So, when I went in there, the girl died. Like, she hung herself or something. So, I was like, and, it, and they gave me a, a, a game over. And I was like, huh? Why did I get a game over? Oh, because she died or something. So, then I was like, okay. So, I went to, to load the game. And it happened again. In other words... You have to do very specific things to progress the story. And it's very vague on what those things are. And I don't like the trial and error, right? That's not really for me. Yeah. So that that's not really for me. Me, me personally. I, I'm not saying it's bad because the 
the creator of Danganronpa was heavily inspired by Corpse Party when he was creating Danganronpa and stuff. So, and I know it's I know it's fantastic. I was getting scared the entire time up until that point when I said, "Yep, not for me." <laughs> I might give it another, another shot in the future, but I would have to restart all the way from the beginning. I remember everything that happened, but I would still want to restart. And I was really feeling it too. Maybe it's just an issue with the first one as well. I'm, I'm, maybe, hopefully, the other games after the first one aren't so cryptic, right? It, it definitely feels like a game that I can enjoy better if I have a guide up or like a walkthrough. But I don't like having a walkthrough or a guide because it spoils it for me. Because I know what to expect. You know, I like to figure it out. That's why I like Dangan Rapa because it's all up here. Your brain, your brain, your brain. And if you know what I mean, you know I like stimulating my brain. I do. I do. So, yeah. But I, I, I did buy it. And I did give it a shot. But I do need to try Clock Tower, definitely, though. Because that is on my list. Because that's the one that the creator was was heavily inspired by. Corpse Party. Or not Corpse Party. That, too, but Clock Tower. And that's a whole franchise, too. Clock Tower. Well, let's see. It's on Xbox? I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. The first Clock Tower is on Xbox. You know what? When I finish... When I finish, um, what's it called? Beacon Pines? This might actually be the next thing I do. Because, you know, I don't really do late nights with LB anymore. It's just not, what? Oh my gosh. This is just a map DLC for Gears of War 4 called Clock Tower. What the heck? I'm talking about the game. Is the game Clock Tower on Xbox? I, I thought it was. Clock Tower Remaster. Oh, it won't be a remaster. It's just a port. Xbox. Uh. Oh, right here it is. Clock Tower on Xbox. Clock Tower. No, it's, the, it's just another map. It's just a map. That's unfortunate. Well, I know it's on PC. right? It's on Steam, I'm, I'm sure. Right? I, I know it's on PlayStation. Can you play Clock Tower on PC? Clock Tower, the first fear English transition PC full game upscale using... Uh, what? Yes, it's a horror game. That this question asks is it a horror game? It is. I, is it only on the PS One? SNES, PC, 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 PC. But that's nineteen ninety seven. Oh. And you know it's 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 pretty complicated to play older games on older PC games on a PC because they are made for those specific operating systems, like nineteen Windows ninety seven, right? And yes, there is the whole thing where it's like, for example, oh, look, it's Dangan Rafa. Woo! But for example, I could be like, like this visual novel, I could click it, right click it, and then go into show more options, and then properties, and then previous versions. Or there's a, I know there's a way to, to run games, though, and, and, and emulate the game in the past operating system. I forgot how to do it. I just have to look it up. But is it on Steam? That's what I don't know. If it's on Steam, then I will definitely feel confident playing the game because I I won't have to do anything extra, most likely. Clock Tower Steam. And LB has a big Steam library. I, I, I typed in stream. But you know how Steam is. The majority of the games, right, many people don't even play through because they always have sales out the wazoo. <laughs> no, they don't have it on Steam. Okay, and I'm not, I'm not going to emulate it. I don't know. By the way, though, I, I'll figure it out some at some point in the future. But yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. You understand what I'm saying? I'm glad. But I also understand what you're saying about the, the graphics and the other point you, you stated about Thingaromper 3. But just trust me. Please trust me. It is so... It's Danganronpa. It's Danganronpa, right? It's, it's, it's still Danganronpa. It's the same creator, the same creative mind that gave us 1 and 2. And, and so much time passed as well. Right. So his creative ability got so much better. The all all of the trials. Uh, now I don't, I don't feel comfortable continuing now because I don't want to spoil anything else because I, 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 I listen. Listen, I you have to you 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 owe it to yourself to play through Danger Rock 3. <laughs> and I, like I said earlier, I, I'm not going to stream it because Danger Rampa is best enjoyed fresh. I already know everything now, you know. But, but I did stream Danganronpa 1 and 2. But I, I didn't play all the way through 1 on stream. I ended up having to stop. Because that was one of the first games that I streamed. And, you know, I didn't really know, like, like, 
you know, I was still trying to find and figure myself out. I'll just say it like that. And so when I finished one and I was like, okay, now I'm going to stream thing up for two, but this time I'm going to commit and stream the entire thing. I literally did one part of it on stream and I was like, dude, no, I got to, you know, whereas now I definitely would nowadays, but I already experienced it. So yeah, it's unfortunate. I, I, I feel like I failed. I feel like I failed, but it's fine. That's why I'm still catching myself and I'm streaming Beacon Pines, an amazing game, an amazing game. Like I said, every, uh, oh my gosh, like even, you know what, you know what, you know what? Uh, when I finish Beacon Pines, do I do reruns? I used to do reruns, I don't do them. But, because what I'm thinking in my head is when I finish Beacon Pines, off when I finish the game, because I only, only, only do it at, at nighttime. Because from, from now on, I like streaming like story games and stuff at nighttime. And if I play Apex or whatever, that's during the daytime, right? But I might do it at nighttime. That, that's, there's no promise on that. No promise. Because before, because that's, that, that's one thing about LB. I don't like making promises. Only promises I make are promises that I know that I can keep. And I also don't like fixing myself to a schedule. I don't like tying myself to a schedule. I know the, the benefits of doing that. But I've managed to become so successful in my life because I don't like sticking myself to a schedule. Because when you stick yourself to a schedule and you deviate from the schedule, you can't make a specific thing on that schedule. What, what ends up happening in your, in your brain psychologically, you feel like, dang, I, I can't believe I missed that. That's what happens. And then if, if that happens, you've, you've introduced the possibility of feeling negative about yourself and stuff. And then, you know, you, you, you've opened the possibility of spiraling downhill. I'm not saying you will, but the pos now it's, it's, it's definitely a variable that can happen now. That's why I like, that's why I've never like living them, limiting myself to a schedule. Now there's some times where I, um, it's kind of like a schedule cause I generally stream around 9 PM that time frame, but it's not exactly nine. Cause you know how Twitch has a schedule tab. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm sure you know that. Twitch has like a schedule tab and I used to put on there, I stream at nine every single, exactly nine every single day. But I was like, dude, I, 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 I can't stick myself to that because then it feels, it, it starts to feel like a job instead of something that I find creative and fun. And like, you know, I was just like, nah, dude. So yeah, that's why when I was still working before I retired, right, I ended up getting to the point where. Because at first, I was, a lot of my stuff was, was full-time and traveling all over the U.S. and outside the U.S. as well. But then I ended up getting to the point where I was like, I can't do it anymore. I got to go part-time. I've earned that now. I can go part-time. And even part-time was still too much. See, I'm starting to get, get in the way too much LB lore, right? <laughs> but yeah. I just never like fixing my stuff to a schedule. Also, I don't feel comfortable doing the rest of this, this soundtrack now. You know, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Ah! But... And I, I, I know I could continue, and there's a chance you might not ever want to play Danganronpa 3. But if I'm recommending it, and I am recommending it, then you know that it's good. Because I recommended it. I recommended it. So you know it's good, because I... Well, hang on, though. That, that's only if a person has my same tastes. Because my taste in, in art and gaming is art. Visual, this is a visual novel. It's, it's art. Music is art. Art is more than just drawing and, you know, as you see, I'm holding a, a, a pen right now. You know, Elby's always taking notes and stuff nonstop. In fact, I, I've never actually. Good. Thank you. That's exactly what I want to hear. You had me spiraling down into like this vortex of trying to explain why you should get into it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just trust me. If you liked one and you liked two, I promise you'll like three. Now, if you've never played Danganronpa 1, well, I know you have, but, like, I'm talking to, like, somebody else. If you've never played Danganronpa 1, then I can't say you'll like 3 because I don't know if you will because it's not for everybody. Not everybody wants to use their brain. Some people want to just do this, hold the controller upside down and just, and not use their brain. And, and, and those are the same people that, that drop fragment and drop streamer building and drop construction every game because they don't want to use their brain. Those type of people, which is the average human, will not enjoy Danganronpa. In fact, Monokuma even states that numerous times in a lot of his, a lot of the things that he says. A lot of the things that Monokuma says. Also, too, you must have missed this, but I did say this as well. I am the Monokuma of the Apex community. <laughs> the man that speaks the truth and, and says exactly how things are, whether or not people want to hear it, because people like to live in their ignorant bliss of 
of fake lies and things that aren't true. Also, too, since you probably also missed this as well, I was talking about, and you should know this character. Oh my gosh, I hate when it does that. Or not hate, hate's a really strong word. I don't like when it does that. Fuyuhiko. You should know this character, too, if you've played Danganronpa Rapper 2. Fuyuhiko, right? The ultimate Yakuza. Now, dang, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> but so, you know, Fuyuhiko from Danganronpa 2, the ultimate Yakuza, okay? Fuyuhiko. And a lot of the characters in Danganronpa definitely impacted and inspired me in a lot of different ways on, on how I view the world and myself. And Fuyuhiko specifically. I said earlier I didn't want to say it, but I ended up saying it because it is the truth, right? Whether people want to recognize it, acknowledge it or not. And in fact, I'll even click this one right here. You know, when it says, when they say, I, or like to introduce himself, right? And it does this, and it says they're the ultimate that. So Fuyuhiko is the ultimate Yakuza, Excuse me, but he's not actually officially a Yakuza member, officially, but he is, but he isn't. He is, but he isn't, right? But he's he's still listed as the ultimate Yakuza because of his potential, his potential to easily become the ultimate Yakuza. Therefore, he's given that title. And so I said this, I was like, you know what? I, and, and I thought this to myself after I finished thinking Rampa 2, which was last year, like midway through last year. And I said to myself from that day forward, I said, I am the ultimate. And I, I, there are different there are different titles. I'm an ultimate. OK, just like for you, Hiko, I am either the ultimate content creator, the ultimate streamer or the ultimate influencer. But just like Fuyuhiko, how he hasn't actually earned that yet, but he has that title because of the sheer potential of him being able to obtain that. I I know that I'm an ultimate and one of those three categories that I listed. I know it. Might not have the boom big old numbers, but I'm not I'm not limited to the present either. I see the future. Just like Shulk says, I can change the future. I change my future all the time. Life is nothing but pathways, right? A lot of people, a lot of people, when I say a lot of people, the average human on this earth, okay? They just exist. They just go on through their day. They don't consciously think to themselves, if I do this, this will impact impact my life. If I, if I choose to Stand up and scratch my butt and run to the restroom. That will impact my life for the rest of, of for, for all of time. People don't aren't that conscious, but I am. Now I'm not perfect in regards to how conscious I am, but I'm somebody that's constantly striving to always be more conscious than I was before, constantly, right? And I'm very much aware that I'm capable of anything, but not just me. Anybody is capable of absolutely anything. You are capable of anything that you want, but people don't believe in that because nobody tells them that parents don't tell their kids hey son you're capable of anything that you want to accomplish anything at all times like i'm constantly constantly con that's why my kids have they're they're broken they're overpowered they're so broken because i constantly i'm telling them this all the time non-stop 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 so that they know that they can accomplish anything if they want to if they truly want to they can that's why, like, I, you know, whatever they become in the future, they'll become that in the way that they want to. I, I never sit here and say things like, because parents say this kind of stuff all the time. Mm. Parents say this kind of stuff all the time. They're, they're like, mm. you, used to, you used to get honor roll. What, what happened? You used to be so smart, and now you're doing all this. What happened? Because they're constantly comparing them to an image of what they used to do in the past. Mm. Okay, hang on. I got to answer this phone call. It's my woman. LB will be back. Oh, oh, hang on, man. Hang on. But I got to turn on another song. I know I said I wasn't going to, but I'm going to. Well, cool morning.
LP returns. LP returns. Okay, so let me show you. Well, that was my woman calling, but there was also she was calling because she said that there's a package outside. I couldn't hear because I have my, my headphones on, but we have a security system. You know, a lot of houses have it nowadays, a security system where it says if somebody's at the door or whatever, rings the doorbell. So she told me about it and I went to check. And I wanna I wanna show showcase this. So you know LB's tatted out of his mind. I got mad tats on I got tats on tats, but all of my tattoos they all mean something, right? I personally believe, because you know, listen, you get a tattoo, every tattoo you get is permanent. Well, actually, LB, you can remove a tattoo and, okay, I understand that, I understand that, but the average person is not going to pay to get the, the process done to remove their tattoo. A tattoo is permanent unless you do the, the, the thing that has to happen, that in other words, pay money to remove it, okay? So a tattoo is permanent, right? I personally believe that every tattoo, I, this is just me, I know some people will disagree, but I believe if you get a tattoo, it needs to have a purpose. And in order to prevent yourself from just having a bunch of irrelevant tattoos on your body, because it stays with you forever, right? Every tattoo after that tattoo has to be more important to you than the one before it. Does that make sense? Now anyway, you know, LB has the tat right here, the crest of the assault, which comes from Fire Emblem. I also have it on the wall right there. But I, that, that tattoo represents, and I've explained this to my family numerous times, it represents the family crest. This, this tattoo, the crest of the assault right here, here, I'll even pull it up right here. The crest of the assault right here. This is the family crest of, of my last name. Oh, hang on, hang on. All right, okay, so this is the tattoo of my family name, my family crest. Borrowing it from, from the crest of the assault, Krom and his family, Krom, Lucina, and the rest of that whole bloodline. Now, now, so a while ago, I ordered something for my daughter, okay? So she's getting older, she's nine years old, and like I said, this tattoo represents the family crest, but she's actually my stepdaughter. She, she's not my daughter from, with blood, right? She doesn't have my last name. And there are some times where she feels sad, or it makes her sad. There's sometimes it, does, it does, it makes her sad. So I told her, I was like, well, I, I haven't told her this, but I'm about to show y'all. But I got this for her. It's a bracelet. And it has the crest right there. The crest of the exalt. Right there. And I'm gonna give it to her. And, I'll, and when I give it to her, I'm also be like, listen, and I've explained her numerous times, right? You are a member of this family, last name or not. Last name or not, you are a member of this family. Last name doesn't define that. It doesn't. Just like, I'm gonna say this as well, you know, people might be like, Oh, see, this 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 guy is so narcissistic, eh! I'm, I'm, who cares what other people say? The other people are other people, valueless individuals who are constantly living their life on loop and repeat and just un depressed and unhappy, etc., etc. Right? But I'll say this, and I've said this in the past. If you consume LB, there, there's just, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. You're more intelligent than the average person because, like, that, that's just how it is. If you consume me, you, you have to be intelligent to, especially if you continue to, to consume LB. That's just the reality. And you're one of my people. Like a family. I have one person say on, on on TikTok, they're like, are you my dad? <laughs> so it made me start to think to myself, hmm. I'll be the world's dad. Even if there's somebody older than me, who cares? I exist beyond age. I'm not, I'm, I'm not limited to just age. Right? Like, you know, like back in the day before I retired, I would always hear people say this all the time. What? I can't take orders from this person. I'm older than him. And you won't expect me to take orders. You're taking orders from them for a reason because they, whew. Look, 
about to get about to kite, about to have me slip up. That person has already proven that they deserve that position and you don't. Age is irrelevant. The fact that you're so stuck on age is probably the reason why you gotta take orders from that person. Because you can't look past that. Some people, oh, don't even get me started too. When I first started creating content and stuff, I would have tons of people say things like, wow, this person's out here trying to give advice. He's so young, he was like, he needs to be taking advice from somebody else. And just, just stuff like that. People don't understand that that when, when people talk like that, when people say things like how people say stuff like that, um, when people say stuff like that to me, if they're saying it to me, they're also saying stuff like that to their kids. And that's also too the reason why a lot of kids, when they become adults, are unhappy and undepressed, or they're unhappy and they're depressed, and they're still doing the same thing for years upon years upon years upon years upon years upon years because they grew up from somebody constantly telling them things like that. I'm your parent. You don't know any better. Listen to me. I brought you into this world. I know more than you. But that's how the average parent talks, dude. That's just how the average parent talks. Isn't that sad? It's the truth. It's the truth. When my when, when my daughter's my, my oldest is nine and my youngest is four. When they have something to say, I listen to them. I learn from them. I, I learn from them. I don't just just because I'm your parent. Wow. Ooh, I'm the parent. Woo. Okay. And. But the average parent won't say that. They'll say, I'm your parent. You don't know what you're talking about. It's just so silly to me. My bad, I didn't mean to, to go on that tangent, but goodness gracious. I got I got changes to, I got changed on to now too, because Reese is going to be playing Day Rampa 3. Round of applause for Reese. Woo! I would though. LB from this point forward, even though I've actually unofficially been this in my mind for a while. I'm the father to the world. I'm the world's father. They just don't know it yet. They just don't know it yet. They just don't know it yet. I'm a classic. Ah, 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 ah. Because I also unfortunately grew up and didn't have, have my father. I had, I had a stepfather. And he definitely scarred me mentally. But... Thank goodness I'm me, and I didn't allow it to stop me from, from accomplishing all the things I accomplished in my life. But definitely still hurt me, because I was definitely told a lot of different things that I shouldn't have been told by him. Like, I can't do that. I'm not good enough. Et cetera, et cetera. That just makes me so sick to my stomach. When I became a parent, I made a conscious vow to myself. I'm going to take all the good that I learned from my parents and then leave behind all the junk. I'll do better than that. And I did it. And I'm still constantly, and I'm constantly getting better, and I always reflect to improve because I'm not a perfect parent. I ask my daughter all the time, what do you think daddy could do better? When I tell her something, I say, all right, do you agree with that? Before I put her on punishment for something, do you agree with that? No, sir. Okay, why? Explain to me. And then she ex explains to me. I'm like, hmm, okay, that, that's fair. And then we come to, people think all the time that you have to just throw your power around people have to throw their power around because they're so used to that that if they don't do that people won't listen to them they won't listen to them because they, oh, oh, my bad we talking about banging rock i'm supposed to be showing appreciation to what's the i appreciate that thank you but i'm constantly having to be better because i've ref, I, I, all my life i've always refused to just be average because I know what an average parent looks like. I've lived with it. It's not good enough. I said this in the past. When I was a kid, I didn't take inspiration. I wasn't inspired by my parents. I was inspired by characters from art. Characters from video games. Characters from movies. Characters from books, comics, anime, etc. Because those were individuals that I respected. Not the same people in my life that were doing the same things and unprogressing. And then he couldn't even hear what I would have to say. Never. Because I'm, I'm a kid. Okay, I've, I've said too much. I've said too much. <laughs> but it's okay, though. Well, I might have to conclude the stream here. Because I can't continue. Oh, actually, I, I, I can actually still continue. Because there is also Danganronpa Ultra Despair Sisters. Huh? What's that, LB? Don't worry, I got you. The Ultra Despair Sisters. 
or also known as Danganronpa Another Episode. So this is one of the spin-offs, because there are spin-off Danganronpa games, okay? And and here's where this canonically takes place. Canonically means in the canon, like where it takes place. This takes place in between 1 and 2. So if you've played Danganronpa 1, this is in between, this is after 1, but before 2. And the main character, are you ready for this? Is, what's her name? I forgot her name, but it's Makoto's sister. The main character of Ninja Rapper 1, this is his sister. Well, not not this. Not not this. This. This is not Makoto. <laughs> but <laughs> but the main character of Ultra Despair Sisters is his sister. I forgot her name. But the two main characters, in fact, you know what? Watch this. Dangan Rampa Ultra Despair Sisters. The the two main characters are Makoto's sister and I don't want to spoil it. Boom. Her. Now, I have to remember what her name is. Her name is... Her name is... Her name is... Oh, thank you. Be think. Toko! Her name is Toko. Toko. Her name is Toko, okay? And, you you, you know, if you remember Toko, she's she's very into Byakia. And if you remember who Byakia is... Byakia. Boom. Byakia Togami. Hey, dude, this character, the ultimate, the ultimate affluent prodigy, affluent prodigy, right? Man, what an amazing character. So, yeah, those are the two main characters, though, T Makoto's sister and Toko. And another fun fact, too, Danganronpa Ultra Despair Sisters is not a visual novel. It's actually a third-person shooter. <laughs> Right, so if you play Resident Evil 4, that's literally what this game is. It's not zombies and stuff. Well, yeah, eh, it's Makono, a bunch of Monokumas. Because, you know, remember, Monokuma is a robot, right? So it's a bunch of, I, you know, I don't even really, I, I put Danganronpa spoilers in the title. And this is one that you don't have to play because it is a spinoff. You don't need to play this to understand the story more, but if you did play this, like, I'll say it like this. If you're a Danganronpa Ultra fan, there's a chance you probably already have played Ultra Despair Sisters. But if you're a Danganronpa Ultra fan, but you haven't, oh, and it's only on PC as well. It's only on PC. Okay, I wish it wasn't. I wish it was also on console. But don't worry, you can actually use a, you can use a controller. It's, it's a gamepad, you can use a gamepad with it. And LB actually has it too. It's so good. The music's so good. But I haven't, I actually haven't finished it. And here's the big kicker. I won't finish it. Because how do I why? Why won't I finish it? It's pretty much because the gameplay. It's not bad. It's just not for me. The story is fantastic. The music is fantastic because it's Dangan Rampa. But it's the gameplay part that just stops me. And that's very unfortunate. But that's also, too, why he made it a spinoff and not in the main series. Because he knows that you can't... Look, look, you can't have the first game be a visual novel, the second game be a visual novel, the third game be a visual novel, and then the fourth game is a third-person shooter, huh? Right? You know, that doesn't make sense. But that's why it's a spinoff. But again, it's still really good. It's, it's, it is canon, which means it's not filler. It, all these events are true. They all happen. But there's another thing, too, that I highly recommend... And it's called Danganronpa. Uh, what's it called? Danganronpa. Man, what is it called? Oh, is it called Danganronpa Zero? Is that what it was? I don't think that's what it's called. Is it? Oh, no, is it? Uh, uh, no, it's not called Danganronpa Zero. That's a different light novel. I cannot remember what it's called. Junko and... What was Junko's... Oh, Mikuro. Right? That was her sister's name, right? M Mikuro? Uh, yes, this one right here. Wait, was it? 
Oh, I'm so confused now. But either way, though, there's a there's a light novel of Danganronpa that has the event. I just can't remember what it's called. But it has the events of before Danganronpa 1. And if you actually manage to play Danganronpa on Xbox, I think it's also on, on PC. But if you get Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc on Xbox, it comes with the light novel built in. But you have to first finish the game. And I highly recommend reading it. It's a light novel. And it's one of the only light novels I've ever read in my entire life, okay? Because it's Danganronpa related. If you know anything about it, you would know that I don't read books. I read a lot. I just don't read books. Because books, there's no music. But And thankfully, the light novel does have music because it's from the game still, right? So yeah, but it's a it's an alternate reality. It's an alternate timeline. And it's not canon. It's filler. But it, ah, I was about to explain the full story. It's just, just no, it's really good. You remember Junko has a sister? Her name is, I believe her name is Makuro, I think. Let's see. Yeah, here's Junko's sister, Makuro, the ultimate soldier. So if you wanted to ever know more about Makuro, Ikusaba, or Mikuro, right? Then I recommend the, the, the light novel. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And I'm still waiting on my controller, too, because now I'm ready to play some Apex. <laughs> By the way, though, I will conclude here. And I will again say thank you again. What is the composer's name? I forgot. Let me look it up again. His name was Masufumi Takada. Thank you, Masufumi Takada, for creating the absolute fantastic music that you have given us in Danganronpa. In fact, I want to listen to just a few of the songs from Ultra Despair Sisters. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is the main menu theme, dude. This is the main menu theme of Ultra Despair Sisters, and off of the bat, it's fire, dude. Now, once I get to the point where like I stop playing it, then that's why I'm gonna stop the soundtrack. But all the songs up to that point are absolutely fantastic because it's it's Masafumi Takara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the main menu, dude. Yeah, Enter the drums. All right, now this next song, Beautiful Dead. This is a remix of Beautiful Dead from Danganronpa 1, Trigger Happy Havoc. Okay. Oh, man. This is a remix of it. You know what, before I continue, I actually, I changed my mind. I'm, I am going to play through Danganronpa uh, Ultra Despair Sisters. Because, like, I'm literally halfway through the game. The last time I played it was December last year. And I literally remember everything that happened so far. Also, too, because of one of the songs as well. It just came to my head, dude. Let's see if I can find it. Let's see if I can find it. Let's see if I can find it. Let's see. It's so good, dude, man. Ah. Oh, wait, is this a remix of this too? Hold on. Yeah, it's a remix as well. Thank you for my point. All right, is this a song? Nope, that's not the song. Let's see if I can find it. Is it this one? Yes, it's this one. It's this one. These are the. Okay, so I will say this. This is a kind of a spoiler, but it's fine. So these are the main villains of Danganronpa. Ultra Despair Sisters. It's a group of kids. And you know, in Danganronpa, you have the ultimates, because in order to 
be in the academy, hopes, hopes, excuse me, hopes peak academy, you have to be an ultimate in a specific field. Well, there's also a elementary school version of that. And it's called, I forgot what it's called. They're not called ultimates. They're called, they're called something different. Mini ultimates or something like that. But either way, it's so interesting, dude. Anyway, these are the, the main villains. They're all like ultimates. It's like, imagine if you were to have to, imagine if the, the main characters of Danganronpa were actually the villains. You know how dangerous that is? Because they're, they're all geniuses. They literally are. I understand, like, they're like, oh, well, they're just, the like, we'll use Gonta. Oh, wait, you, I can't say that because that's from Danganronpa 3. My bad. <laughs> so, well, we'll use somebody from the past. We'll use Mikan, okay? We'll use Mikan from Danganronpa 2. And remember, Mikan is the ultimate nurse. Mikan. All right. And remember, remember how hard it was to figure out each and every single one in regards to like their their murder. It, it's, it's difficult. It's hard. Yeah, exactly. It, it would be hard. But now imagine if you have to deal with multiple of them. It's a, it, that's why it's a whole game, because it's 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 a whole game because they're that difficult, even as elementary kids. Remember, Mikan may just be the ultimate nurse, but you got to think about it. There's, a, there's, there's billions of nurses out there in the world. But to be the ultimate nurse, you have to be a genius. You have to be a genius. Okay? You don't have to just be the ultimate detective to be smart and a genius. No. They're all geniuses. All of them. Just like one of my favorite characters from Danganronpa. What's her name? I can't remember her name. Her name is Dangan. Danganronpa. Hinami. Hinami. I spelled that all wrong. I know I did. Yeah, that didn't even, nothing even popped up correctly. Hinami. I typed the same thing in. What was her name? He, Hina. But that was her nickname. Her. Io. Io Hina. So she's one of my favorite characters, okay? And one of my, definitely one of my favorite characters. And her right here. And it's like, oh, well, she's just like a, a airhead and ah, she's an ultimate swimmer. But like, she's not. No. Uh, like I said, to be an ultimate, you have to also be a genius. That's just how it is. That's just how it is. Right. These are not normal people. Just like LB. I'm not a normal person. How many? There's not like I'm not trying to sit here and like toot my own horn doo, 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 and stuff. But there's not many. The, the average age to even retire in America is like what? 68 or something. You know what I mean? Like, I can't, I'm not trying to see, it sounds like I'm like trying to narcissistic alert. Er, er. No, they're all very unique, genius individuals. But don't just stay fixed on the fact that, oh, she's just the, she, she's just a ultimate swimmer. Or LB's just the ultimate streamer, right? No, they're, they're genius individuals. Kind of like, I'll say this. So, you know, like Snoop Dogg and, and, uh, like Tyler the Creator, I'm, I'm naming like music artists, rappers, like Tupac and all of them. People can be like, oh yeah, they're just rappers, but their IQ, they they have it, they've done an IQ test. They they have genius level IQ. Kendrick Lamar, he has a genius level IQ. Snoop Dogg, all of them, DMX, they have genius levels of IQ. They take them the test. So if I were to do that, I already know. I already know. Because I'm an ultimate. Right? There's, there's always more than what, what exists at face value with just a title. Right? So, yeah. So, now imagine a bunch of them, but as villains, and also they're kids. Oh, well, but, but they're just kids, so they can't be that dangerous if they're just kids. Okay. I think that. Think that, I guess. I, I, okay. All right. You have fun dealing with that. I'm not dealing with that. Uh-uh. <laughs> nope. I, uh-uh. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. This is their theme, dude. They're scary, dude. They're dangerous, man. I'm telling you. I'm see this is why I gotta I gotta I gotta I gotta continue it. I'm gonna continue it. They're they are dangerous, man. Oh <laughs> man. They're dangerous, dude. But this is why I'm going to get back into it too, because I remember them and like they're they're written so well. 
They're so dangerous. You remember Nagato from Danganronpa 2? One of the most intelligent characters. And they're all geniuses. Remember that. But if we were to like create a tier list of their level of genius. I, you know what? Should I do that? I'm going to do it. Oh, I can't because it's going to include the characters from Danganronpa 3 as well on that list. Well, I, yeah, I'm going to do it. I just want to include them. Well, but then it's not fair because some of them are also. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Danganronpa. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I just want to include the Danganronpa 3 characters, right? And this is not how much LB likes the characters or blah, 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 blah. This is in regards to their level of intelligence, okay? All right, so we're going to put down here C tier is going to be the average adult human. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, say it off the bat right now. Every single character is, is higher than this. Every single one. Dude, I really want to do the thing around three characters so bad. Uh, uh, don't look. Spoilers. <laughs> There's also characters from here from the... Oh, I, I, I can't do it. There's even characters on here from Danganronpa Ultra Despair Sisters. I can't do it. I can't do it. In fact, hang on. I'll be more specific. I'll do... Two. I'll just do specifically two. Okay? There we go. There we go. There we go. I gotta, I gotta keep it like laser. You see what I mean? I've said this in the past. People always make tier lists and they have an S, double S, triple S. That, 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 there's no value to that. Like, that's dumb. S signifies overpowered. There's not more overpowered than ultra. No, that doesn't make sense. I've always thought that was just so cringe, dude. And then also, too, a lot of people, when they make tier lists, they don't put it in order from left to right. They just put it on there. They, don't, they just throw it on the list. And they don't explain anything about it. There's no context. It's just so cringy to me. Oh, normal people making normal tier lists. Why is it not working? Keeps deleting it. There you go. Hopefully that, that fixed it. All right, here's Danganronpa 2. All right. Average adult adults intelligence. Probably sold that wrong. That'll work. Who cares? Okay. So here's the average adult's intelligence. There's no point doing this. I don't even like ranking them in regards to like their genius. I don't. Honestly, I'm going to be completely honest. Even Kazuichi Soda, who people are like, oh, he's dumb. All these characters, every single character in Danganronpa is deeper than, than, than they appear at face value. They, they just are. They just are. In fact, I feel like me creating and trying to rank them is is devaluing them honestly but yeah but i do know what i do want to do actually i'm not going to end stream because i said i was going to do this earlier well i said i didn't want to but i want to now since i already finished the soundtrack for the first and second one i want to try and see if i can find okay you have a good one your rank session nice 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 congratulations too by the way if you leave i'm, I'm i am going to go back to dang around three to soundtrack i'm just saying it right now <laughs> But good luck. You're getting your good luck from LB. You've got this. Don't get tilted. If you start getting tilted, just just hop off. Just just, just hop off, okay? Oh, are you still playing Bane? I remember you used to be a Watsy main, but then you told me you started playing Bane. Oh. Dang, I need my controller to hurry up and come. It's supposed to be here today. I ordered it from Amazon. Well, my wife got it for me, actually, because yesterday was my birthday. She's such a good woman. But either way, though, good luck, though. Good luck. And I'm about to start up Dang Romper 3 now. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, ah, ah. Now, where'd I leave off? <laughs> Monokuma arrives, become friends. All right, I left off here. By discovery. New TA. Yep, new TA. Okay, so in the past Dang and Rapper games, when you're doing the mini game, like the different, because of the different mini games, I did say this. Uh, I'm gonna just be completely honest, and especially in Danganronpa One, there there's a specific mini game. It's like the the crossword mini game or whatever. We gotta find it. It is. It's it's really hard. It's not bad, but it is very hard. And they made it better in Danganronpa Two, but it was still kind of flawed. And so like they took all the feedback from those two games, and every single mini game in Danganronpa Three just works. It just works. I feel my lips are chapped. Hang on. Let me take care of his lips real quick. 
with some of my Carmax. Chapstick Breathe. That's how you do it. Rub your lips together. But here's the part many people don't do because nobody tells them to do this. You rub them together and then you do this. You rub, them, you rub it off of you. you rub it off because it's already soaking in now. And also when you rub off, you're likely to also get some of that dead stuff off as well, dead skin and stuff. Either way though, the, the new TA is fire. They fixed every single mini game and also they have an amazing song to accompany them. They got all the mini game things right. Man, they got them all right, dude. This song plays way. This song plays post game. This is after the game is complete and the extra board game mode. That's crazy though, why, why they show it right there? Living in a parallel world. Now this is my favorite investigation theme in the entire series. That trumpet killing it.
This is the best morning theme as well in my opinion. But the Danganronpa... The first one does have an also... I think they're, they're evenly matched. Also, okay, also a fun fact too. I did also use this song quite a bit, quite a bit in my earliest videos that I would upload to my YouTube and my TikTok. A lot, a lot. When I also hear the songs and they around for three, I just can't help but see Shuichi. I just see Shuichi. Man. Hey, Shuichi. The ultimate maid. Okay, so this is a fire. I consider this a battle theme. And I said that I have a playlist of my favorite video for slash anime battle themes. This definitely, definitely is on there. Especially the, the later version of it. Despair Death Road. Man. I remember the first time that I did this too. I was just like, dude, this, this is impossible. Because it was literally chaos. I'm like, there's, there's just no way you can do it. I don't think it is possible to do it the first time. I don't think it is. But if there is, I'm sure it probably uses glitches, bugs, or something in order to, to do it. I, I'm, what if there is? I don't know. But like, I was like, there's just no way, dude. <laughs> and then, but Kaede did never, she did not quit. She did not relent. She's like, let's do it again. And we did it again and got bodied again. I think we did it a third time, I think. And we got bodied. And everybody was like, no, dude, we're not. We can't. Man, like I said, Kaede is, is, is not one of my favorite overall character in the entire series. You hear that? By the way, uh, oh, hang on, my phone was ringing this whole time. Hang on.
Oh, I didn't even switch it to LB will be back. My bad. Okay, so look, my, my, my woman video called me. She video called me, and, and, and here's how I was answering. You know how like old heads answer the phone? When they're, they're just like, if it's a video call, they get like real close. This is what I was doing to her. I was just like, hello. Hello. No, I wasn't smiling. I was just like, hello. And I was like, what if I actually did all my streams? Like I just got like mad close. Kind of like how, how like Kanye, you know that meme where it's like Kanye answers the phone and he's just like mad close to it. It's like just dummy serious. <laughs> That's all I was thinking of LT. But I have to unfortunately confuse streams with it. But again, either way though, thank you again. Masupini, gotta make sure I'm saying the name correctly. Masafumi Takada for your amazing music, as well as the creator of Dengue Rampa. In fact, let me also make sure I say that name correctly as well, instead of just saying the creator. Right, he deserves to have his name said. Come on now. Dengue uh, Rampa creator. Kazutaka Kuda. Thank you. Danganronpa has changed my life. It's changed my perspective on a lot of different things and the music from Masagumi Takata as well. Thank you. You watch my vibes, I appreciate it. 